What's up? Red Nation Blogger here with another video. I got the Rockets hat on, so y'all know that this is a Rockets video. I mean, it's that simple. Before I start again, please, for those of you that are unsubscribed, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. That's all I ask. Not gonna give you no boohoo crybaby story. Just hit the subscribe button for me and you will continuously get content put on your YouTube that's not national media content. All that being said, Jalen Green, there was a, uh, I think the ESPN did a player ranking uh, going into the NBA season. Uh, I saw that they had Jalen Green ranked 62nd, and he's the only Rockets player to rank in the top 100. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really think it's a big deal. I mean, we know that typically national media talking heads don't pay attention to bad teams. But to combat that, I will say to have Kay Cunningham Evan Mobley, and Scotty Barnes. To have them 30 spots ahead of Jalen Green is kind of crazy to me. I understand Evan Mobley probably more than any uh, more than Scotty Barnes and Kay Cunningham because Evan Mobley's impact, he is like what he brings to a table for to a team defensively, offensively, this, just the unique skill set that he has. It, it's second to none, really, in all honesty. It's second to none. So I kind of understand him being there. But I will say, to be fair, when Jared Allen went down and Evan Mobley was still there, their defense slipped dramatically. So, I mean, how really great or transcendent was his defense when Ed Jared Allen wasn't there to cover up a lot of things? He was a rookie, though, so I'm going to give him that leeway. Kay Cunningham, I understand he averaged 17, 6, and 6 last season. Um, shot 41% from the field, 31% from three on like five or six attempts. Scotty Barnes, he's a, a good wing player. He can score. He can defend multiple positions, the one through four, depending on the skill set, one through five sometimes, depending on who you got at that five spot. So I understand uh, the people being enamored with him, I guess, uh, people being like enamored with his skill set, enamored with what he brings to the table. But again, a lot of Rockets fans are upset that Jalen Green is 62 and these other guys are in their 30s. Personally, yes, he shouldn't be 62 if those guys are in the 30s. But 62 is very, very fair. And I think that when you have a guy with Jalen Green's skill set, Jalen Green's skill set, I'm not saying that he's going to become any of these players verbatim, but just his skill set, the way that he attacks the floor, his scoring repertoire, everything like that. He reminds me a lot of Bradley Bill, Donovan Mitchell, Zach Levine, Devin Booker type of players. Guys that can play on ball, guys that can play off ball, guys that are great at scoring the ball, guys that all have some measure of athleticism to their game. Um, and I think that that's where Jalen Green fits in. I think that he could potentially be better than those guys. I think he's definitely, outside of maybe Zach Levine, I think that Jalen Green is definitely the most athletic out of that pairing. And he also might be the tallest outside of Zach Levine again. But um, I, I definitely do think that Jalen Green can, can be better than those guys and surpass those guys. I just try to look at it the way that the media look at it. You know, I, I look at it and I'm like, you know, he's a scorer. Scores typically of that cloth don't really impact winning basketball if you don't have quality pieces around them. And that's not to say that Kay Cunningham was just winning games in Detroit. That's not to say that we know Scotty Barnes wasn't the guy on Toronto. We know Evan Mobley wasn't the guy on Cleveland, right? However, we saw that those guys, you can drop them into winning situations and they be in the play-in spot or the playoffs outside of, of course, Kay Cunningham. So I kind of understand where the media and how they're looking at it and everything like that. But at the end of the day, we know how this is. We're Houston Rockets fans. We're used to our players being underrated. I thought Alperin Sengun should have been in the top 100, personally, especially if you're going to put Ke Keegan Murray in there, especially if you're going to put Paolo Bancaro in there. Alperin Sengun should definitely be in the top 100 then because those guys haven't played a single game. You know what I'm saying? So I can definitely understand the frustration with that. And Alperin Sengun will definitely turn a lot of heads this year. I think he might be the most improved player going into this season. Either him or Kevin Porter Jr. is my bet if I had one. I don't know, man. I just, it's, it's not a lot to cry home. It's not a lot to cry about. It's not a lot to cry about. Like, I'm not about to sit here and be upset about a ranking going into the season. You know what I'm saying? I understand the, it, it could be a little bit ridiculous, but I'm not going to cry home about that. Also, wanted to say, I fully expect 
Jalen Green to average 22 points per game on about 46 to 47 percent shooting from the field and about 37 to 39 percent from three this year. I fully expect it. With the addition of, of Jabari Smith and Tari Eason, and now you have guys on this team outside of like a few. Now you have guys on this team that are bought in. Everybody on this team is on the same page now. There's, uh, uh, besides some, everybody on this team, I feel like, are, is bought in, right? Like, we know that they want to improve defensively. We know that Jalen Green wants to take the next step. Kevin Porter's playing for a contract. But these guys have been here before, and they've done that in a season. They only won 20 games last year, and I think the year before that, they won 20 games again. This team is tired of losing games. This team is ready to take that next step. Moving Christian Wood out of here, uh, putting start, uh, St. Go in the starting lineup. Jabari Smith, I assume, will be starting. Jay Sean Tate at the three. Jalen Green at the two. And Kevin Porter Jr. at the one. I think this Rockets team can surprise a lot of people that first half of the season, though that third of the season, you know, from about October, uh, mid to, uh, early to mid-October, to about right before you get to Christmas around Thanksgiving. I think they can surprise a few teams. I think they had the potential to maybe beat some teams that they shouldn't be beating. You know what I'm saying? But I think as the grinds of the regular season go on, eventually this is a young team, and those young team errors will rear its head sooner or later. But I'm excited for this team's future. I'm I'm really excited for Jalen Green, like, a ton. You know, I, I really think he takes that next step to being an all-star, to being an all-NBA caliber player. I, anything less than 22 points per game next season from Jalen Green, I'll be disappointed because I just feel like he has the ability. And last year, the way that the season started off, with the double big lineup, playing Daniel Thice, playing Christian Wood, playing Jay Sean Tate, with the lack of spacing, it really looked bad for Jalen Green. And then, right when they see Steven Silas finally moves Daniel Thice to the bench and they put Christian Wood at the five, the team runs off and wins seven or eight in a row or something like that. And Jalen Green gets hurt the first game of that winning streak. And the team wins like that, and you're like, oh, well, it, it, you know, from the outside looking in, it looks like, oh, it might have been a Jalen Green problem, when in reality, we know, those that watch the game, we know that those that it wasn't it wasn't that. It's been a very slow offseason right now since the Donovan Mitchell trade. Uh, Red Nation blog, again, as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm out.